My name is Rachel Varga. Let me teach you how to optimize your beauty and biohacking practices to help you achieve the best skin of your life. Hello, everyone, and welcome. My name is Rachel Varga. I'm a double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011, and I am simply a humble human on a mission to help you achieve the best hair, skin, nails of your life, and I'll teach you how to achieve just that while also slowing your cellular aging with a little bit of biohacking. We have joining us today my dear husband, Gabriel Varga, and Gabriel just so happens to be a six-time pro world champion and kickboxer who recently competed and got a little bit of a scar on his eyebrow. So in this session here, I'm going to be sharing with you the one object that your traditional med spa might not want you to know about because of the benefits of collagen and elastin, pigmentation, helping with scarring, acne scarring, traumatic scarring, surgical scarring, all sorts of things. So we're gonna be diving into that just shortly. But Gabriel, why don't you tell us about your experience with using this little gadget here called a dermal roller? So you might not be able to tell, but I have about 60 stitches. It's probably about 10 separate cuts across my eyebrows. And this is made of not from not from me, not from, not me. from her, no, from, <laughs> comp from competition. So I, the big thing that I've had the benefit uh, of using is the derma roller, which basically going over has made the scars that much more difficult to see. I tell people that I have that many stitches, and they look at me they're like, "What? Where no, are they? No, you don't." Yeah. But I've been slacking a little bit, being a little lazy. On just a month ago. Uh, I had a competition and I got cut there. It was decent. I haven't been rolling uh, just out of sheer laziness and it's not going away very fast. And I guess after this episode, I need to get back to actually going over the scar because it's just been super successful with me, you know, staying, just avoiding that fighter look. Yeah, well, I mean, it, look at the difference on your eyebrows. You can barely even see these ones. And I actually took out a number of those stitches when you came back from your fights. And then your four deep forehead lines too. Uh, this can be helpful for that too, fine lines and wrinkles. Your wrinkles are less than when we first met 12 years ago. Yes, yeah, so I had a convertible from basically 16 to 25 when I met Rachel. And the forehead lines were getting pretty deep and it wasn't yeah. something that I was too worried about. But then once Rach brought it to my attention, I went, oh no, I've got to get on this. And I started rolling and rolling and rolling. And now all of a sudden, 11, 12 years later, 12 years later. You're more handsome than ever. <laughs> yeah, they've, they've decreased and I don't even really have those lines anymore. Yeah, it's pretty incredible. So you look younger and also my biological age thanks to biohacking is nine years younger as well. So what's really cool is we can combine the best of all of these worlds, both the Western, okay, let's do some rejuvenation, things like that, but also with like functional and biohacking to help you recover fast. I mean, we're not gonna talk about all the supplements and biohacks that we had you doing during your last, your last fight camp, but when you dermal roll, what does it feel like? Does it hurt? Are you nervous to do it? Do you prefer to do it at home or would you prefer to go into a clinic to do it? So I would say from what I've experienced so far in terms of being at the clinic and having some of the lasers done and such, if, if those were kind of like a 10 on the pain scale, and I don't even know if there were ones more painful than that, but let's say the top was a 10, this is like a one. Mm -hmm. This is so pleasant. You know, somebody goes, oh, look at all the little needles. It's scary. And I go, no, this is the one treatment which I am actually happy to do because it does not hurt my face. Yeah, and to be fair, it's not just you. Actually, what I find clinically, I've performed well over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures. It's the gentlemen that seem to have the lowest pain threshold when it comes to skin and rejuvenation. And I postulate it's something to do. There's some difference with your nociceptors, which is how your body detects pain. So this is a great option. It's a little bit more comfortable. It's a little bit more discreet on how to address fine lines, deep wrinkles, crow's feet, surgical scars from say upper blepharoplasty or whatever, even scars and stretch marks on your body, this can be helpful. It's just a great option. And this is why a lot of med spas might not want you to know about how powerful your home care 
really can be with your skincare, with your dermal rolling, and of course, ways to get that optimal rejuvenation, which I love to write academic research articles on that you can actually find my papers at rachelvarga.ca forward slash research. And some of them are even open source, so you can get them without even having to have a subscription to the journal. Well, thanks so much for joining us, Gabriel. It's great to have you chime in and share with us what dermal rolling feels like for you. There's a couple of different roller options and I've been able to help you figure out which depth and, and the techniques to use and then of course, which products to apply afterwards as well, which I'm gonna talk about just shortly here. But thanks so much for joining us and definitely check out Gabriel Varga on the Gabriel Varga official YouTube where sometimes I pop in and we talk a little bit about biohacking and recovery. All right, let's talk about dermal rolling, microneedling. What does it do? What's the history? What are some warnings I have for you and how you can get optimal outcomes through a combination approach of combining both your at-home skincare and rejuvenation plan with also maybe what you're doing in the clinic. First of all, let's start with the history of microneedling and dermal rolling. Since the 90s, this has actually been something that's been employed across the globe. The verdict is out on who really started it first, but there were a few physicians in North America, the UK, and South Africa that all kind of came to this general consensus that microneedling could be helpful for things like improving scarring on the skin, promoting collagen, and even helping with pigmentation, and even helping to promote regrowth of dormant hair follicles. This is very exciting stuff here. So the verdict's out on who actually started it, but I will share with you that one of those initial researchers actually lives where I live, and I have had the pleasure of learning through them how to help my clients get the best skin of their lives since 2011. Now with dermal rolling, it's not for everybody. It's definitely for someone who is somewhat of a type A, who's actually going to stick with the plan and do this about two to five times a week. This can be a very cost effective, no downtime to little downtime option to do from the comfort of your own home. Now, yes, you can go into the clinic for microneedling as well with things like PRP and all of that, uh, but there are some things you also need to know about that, which I'm more than happy to share if we're talking off camera here. So just wanted to put that out there. But at home, microneedling can be very helpful. And I've seen this serve a lot of my clients between the ages of 60 to 90 that say didn't have the time, money, or desire to do anything in clinic from lasers or injectable perspectives or surgical perspectives. But they were willing to use this little gadget two to five nights a week and again, use the right products to go alongside it to address their specific skin goals and needs. Ingredients that can be used with dermal rolling, copper peptide, hyaluronic acid, lactic acid, vitamins A, C, E, glutathione, different types of forms of retinol. These can all be used alongside dermal rolling. But what you need to know is what I've observed that my most vibrant and radiant clients, what are they doing? Now, this is what I study. I study radiance. How can we achieve the best skin of our life? What is radiance? What makes someone magnetic? What gives someone the best skin of their life and slow their cellular aging? It's all about making good decisions all the time in regards to your body, mind, spirit, and energy practices, air, water, lighting, electromagnetic purification, and also regular cleansing. Those are all things that I've seen my most vibrant and radiant clients doing. Now, those clients of mine that do their rolling that are ages 60 to 90, what I notice about their skin is they have thicker skin, smaller pores, fewer fine lines and wrinkles and pigmentation than those that don't dermal roll. What I also find about clients of mine that are ages 60 to 90 compared to clients of mine that are in their 20s and 30s is that those that roll actually have thicker skin than even those that are decades younger to them. And what is what could that possibly be caused by? collagen. There's many different types of collagen. So when we're talking about the history of dermal rolling and what it does, essentially what we're wanting to do is 
communicate with the skin a little bit. We're sort of aerating the lawn, if you will. And what we're wanting to achieve is tissue remodeling. Now lasers can do this and microneedling can do this and other types of skin treatments can do this too. But for the purpose of this video, this is not medical advice, this is educational information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. I'm also happy to give you professional guidance on this in a one-on-one -on -one call as well, but not publicly here for various reasons, actually for liability reasons. So there's a story around this, why you're not really seeing good information online about dermal rolling techniques. Now, a few years ago, I was at a big conference. We're talking some of the biggest aesthetic plastic surgeons, aesthetic physicians, aesthetic nurses across the globe. And a number of years ago, we were seeing a huge uptick in complications from DIY rejuvenation. And if you look on social media, there's videos everywhere of people trying to show them doing things from the comfort of their own home that they saw somebody else on, you know, a social media platform demonstrating. And then they have a problem and then they ring up their local provider to help them fix it. And this was becoming such a problem, especially in the USA, for whatever reason. Maybe it's a lack of regulation and it's just easy access to counterfeit products. Who knows? And also maybe higher population. But the bottom line was all of us decided to take, well, most of us, <laughs> decided to take our treatment videos offline in an effort to reduce liability and to promote more safety. Now that is my bottom line is pro providing optimal outcomes. And in my recent paper I just had published in a UK journal, I talk about my optimal rejuvenation algorithms to achieve optimal results, right? Healthy skin, clear skin, glassy skin. Now in that paper, which you can find at rachelvarga.ca slash research, it's my treatment algorithm paper, I discuss the importance of your home care and then in the clinic going from least invasive to most invasive. It's almost like your home care, things like your dermal rolling, your biohacking, which I will definitely talk about how we combine, we can potentially combine dermal rolling and stack it with other biohacks we do. Why don't I drop that knowledge bomb right now? Let's just do it. I actually love to do my dermal rolling in the bathtub while I'm soaking in an Epsom salt soak, two cups of Epsom salts, one cup of borax, one cup of baking soda, a little bit of my fantastic pineapple body oil. So that when I emerge from the tub, I am hydrated head to toe like a goddess, feel super fabulous. And then what I might have going on in the room is, you know, my red light over in the corner, nowhere near the bathtub, obviously. And then I will take that time for myself. So I'm grounding, I'm detoxifying in a hot tub, and then I'm doing my dermal rolling. So this is a way that you can stack your biohacks and accessing your, having your body access magnesium before bed is just such a great way to wind down and help you get better sleep. And when you can start to incorporate things like this into your biohacking routine, into your daily practices, you're going to be setting yourself up for optimal outcomes because you're actually going to have a rhythm and you're actually going to do it. Dermal rolling isn't for everybody, but it is for the specific type of person that's willing to do the work. So a lot of biohackers love dermal rolling because they're doing all these other things to ensure that they are making good decisions and caring for themselves as much as they can. And there's people like my husband who isn't a huge biohacker, but he does do some things, but he just innately knows what is good for him and will make good decisions day in and day out to support his body, mind, spirit, and energy. So some of us need a little bit of biohacking metrics, you know, quantifiable data and all this stuff. I like to look at photography, whether or not, say for example, this, you know, skin supplement, that I love to use is, is doing something or not. And I actually did a study with that alongside another plastic surgeon on the other side of the country. And we both had the same results. He ended his study at three weeks. I ended mine at, at six and also eight weeks. And across the board, more golden glow and complexion. Very interesting, actually. Fine lines and wrinkles started to look a little bit more shallow 
So they improved in pretty short order, actually. And also reduction of hyperpigmentation. So sunspots or age spots, if you will, as well as diffuse redness, the corners of the nose, and also redness around the eyes, the lash line, and even darkness around the eyes. So very fascinating that, you know, we both had different camera setups, photography setups, but we all, we didn't actually have a single non-responder, which is pretty cool. That was excited. That was exciting. I um, presented that with him. It was, I think, translated in five different languages. It's pretty cool. Uh, but there's a lot of gimmicks when it comes to hair, skin, nail supplements out there. So a um, buyer beware because some of those things, when they get third-party independent lab testing done on them, they have ingredients that are not listed on the back of the label. And I've even seen one that was influenced by the biggest influencers out there a number of years ago. <laughs> containing lead. So in the in the two of what I, what you're taking with this particular hair skin nail supplement in the two of those it actually exceeded the daily allowable limit for lead. So something's in there that you don't want it to be in there. So that is not what I work with. I work with third party independent lab tested products. It's very very important for you to become also a smarter consumer with your skincare, your hair care, and anything you're doing to help support yourself. That third-party independent lab testing goes a long way to ensure that you are on the path to get optimal outcomes. Now, what you really need to know with dermal rolling is it doesn't have to be overcomplicated, but you do have to do it the right way. Now, I actually have a dermal rolling guide, which is exclusive to my clients and those that take my programs, and I actually show them how to do this. And then they have a guide to give them ongoing, um, have ongoing reference to. Now, with some of the things that I see online that are very poor techniques include taking, you know, two rollers and going like this. Just that's bad technique. Don't do that. Do not do that. Basically with your roller, you want to be doing paintbrush pressure only. You're not going to be seeing any blood or anything like that if you're doing it appropriately. Uh, the needle depth is really important. So depending on what we're wanting to achieve, say for example, 0.3 millimeter is pretty standard to be done two to five times a week. Sometimes if we're wanting to address deeper scarring or acne scarring or traumatic scarring or stretch marks, sometimes we can go to a little bit of a deeper roller depth. And sometimes we want to get very meticulous and detail oriented and be able to do areas of the face that are highly contoured that your roller just simply can't get to. But the thing with rollers is some rollers are only going to last about 10, 20 uses well, others can last up to two years. They will simply dull like a razor would. So this is where the quality matters. You don't want to be buying stuff that's gonna go in your product drawer where products go to die. We all have, we all have <laughs> these drawers. But what we wanna do is be very concise with what we're doing to our skin. So the trick with dermal rolling, with how to get optimal outcomes, is to make sure that you are doing other things as well. So not only performing your dermal rolling two to five times a week, but also your basic skincare, AM and PM. There's no point going for this bright, shiny object if you're not doing the initial groundwork too. And the way I like to think about this is having you start off with a basic protocol to stabilize the skin for about two weeks now, this is something that I can customize for you, depending on what your skin goals, values, needs, and budget and lifestyle are. This is where I come in handy. Cleansing the skin morning and night is critical. Moisturizing morning and night feeds the skin. Sunscreen every single day protects the skin. No chemical sunscreen filters. If your sunscreen ends with an own, you need to get rid of it because that's a chemical filter that could very well be harming you. And based on very mainstream research, so you want to be switching to a more mineral sunscreen, not just a chemical and maybe a mineral, but like no chemical sunscreen filters at all, mineral only. 
And there's some other nuances with sunscreens too. Not all mineral sunscreens are created equally because there can be different filler agents as well. So I work with products. I work with many different brands. We're talking like 15 different brands that I've worked with since 2011 that I see my clients keep coming back for more of. And that is where I keep leaning into what people are getting results from. So that's why having someone like myself in your back pocket to ask you these questions, it's very, very handy when you need really good information because there's a lot of really bad free information out there, especially with dermal rolling because it's something that's so popular. Now, the other question I got, I want to mention this and then I'll carry on what to do after sunscreen is you really have to be careful how you care for your roller with cleaning your roller, with storing it and all of that. Uh, because you don't wanna be dropping an over $100 device and then bending the needle and then using the roller and then having it tear at the skin. Um, one of the other things I wanna just briefly mention is that you can roll the face, eyelids, lips, neck, chest, and hands, and even other areas of the body where perhaps you have some type of scarring or um, imperfection that you may want to uh, do some collagen remodeling in the area. So when it comes to sunscreen, it's also really important that you can even roll over the lips, which is amazing. But when you're doing that, you definitely want to make sure that you have a mineral sunscreen on the lips to protect the skin because after rolling, you can sometimes get a little bit of irritation, redness, flakiness, uh, depending on how well you've prepared your skin or if you have the right products on hand to actually nourish the skin afterwards. So that's why sun, sun protection is so key after rolling is to protect the skin. And then you need to be exfoliating a couple times a week. And I've interviewed people that say, you know, no exfoliation, that's bad. Or clients that say, oh, I'm scared to exfoliate because I have sensitive skin. Now, exfoliating, in my opinion, is very important. But like with dermal rolling, there is a good way and a not so good way to do your dermal rolling. I actually have a free guide that talks about the easy five steps to do to stabilize your skin over at rachelvarga.ca is my sophisticated skin cheat sheet. And also you'll find that guide in my nine keys to healthy skin and slowing aging. Those little five things that I talk about, cleanse, moisturize, sunscreen, scrub, and also some weekly treatments. And then for biohacks, clarifying your air, water, lighting, and electromagnetics. That's a great download. rachelvarga.ca forward slash slow aging. It's totally free. It'll at least get you started for some of the products that you're using now with whatever skincare products you have to at least optimize maybe how you're using it a little bit more. Now, what you wanna do before getting into dermal rolling is to stabilize the skin first. Then I can help you figure out which type of serums and products to use alongside your dermal roller to get you the results that you're hoping for. Now, this is really important because not all product is created for transdermal application, okay? Some products are formulated for topical application on top of the skin, but what dermal rolling and microneedling does is it creates that little channel of injury and allows your products to be absorbed 100 to 1,000 times deeper. So this is why you can't just roll the skin and then use whatever products you have afterwards because they have to be okay for that transdermal application. And for products to be worthwhile to use with rolling, they have to be clear of preservatives, emulsifiers, parabens, phthalates, sulfates, artificial dyes, fragrances, very, very important. Because I've actually seen on social media videos people doing their rolling and then say, for example, they applied this really strong lactic acid and they actually had to go seek attention to deal with the profound inflammation that they experienced. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of just trying to have at it with the free content you find online. Uh, pretty much all dermal rolling videos I've ever seen online definitely is lacking some information and isn't necessarily the quality information that I know that you are seeking. So we've talked about the history of dermal rolling. We've talked about the benefits. Let me just reiterate that. Promoting collagen production via the mechanism of elastin and collagen through that little needle 
accessing that little fibroblast to then tell the skin to make more elastin and collagen. Now you can get that collagen remodeling with lasers as well. Not all lasers are created equally. And in fact, combining laser therapies with dermal rolling can, in my experience, also lead to optimal outcomes. Now, we've also talked about some of the things you need to be aware of. So not getting a roller off of a shady third-party auction website is very, very important. Become a more conscious consumer. Like I said, I like to work with rollers that have been manufactured for a long time and have undergone rigorous product testing through third-party independent labs. This is very, very important that you don't skip that step so that you don't inadvertently expose yourself to potentially heavy metals and other things. So how to get optimal outcomes? I've mentioned dermal rolling and I mentioned lasers briefly. Now, if you combine your at-home skincare routine with your skincare to stabilize the skin, like those five things I mentioned, then you add things like at-home peels, then you add things like at-home dermal rolling. You're doing biohacking. You're taking skin-supporting supplements. Now, these are all ways to set your skin up for success by ensuring your body has the cofactors it needs for happy and healthy cellular rejuvenation and regeneration and repairing, right? But it's going to take time. New collagen forms at about three months and mature collagen forms at about six to eight months. So after being really consistent with dermal rolling, maybe you've even had a laser treatment to kick things up a little bit, it does take quite a few months to really appreciate the outcomes. So this is sort of like the gift that keeps giving, if you will, as long as you stick it out and you're consistent with it. I will say, if I have an event to go to, I do love to do my dermal rolling leading up to it because you get this like little bit of like slight edema from the healing, which makes your skin look a little bit extra plump. Um, that's why sometimes when you do your dermal rolling, the next thing you notice a little bit of plumpness, it can be from that slight edema. But the collagen does take time to occur. I wanted to briefly end on making sure that you are keeping your air, water, lighting, LED lights, that's why I put on my blockers here, and also your electromagnetics as pure in your home and office situation as possible because these are key aging triggers for the skin. And if you're going to be investing in dermal rolling and skincare products, you definitely want to be adding some biohacking into the mix. Biohacking is art and science of modulating and essentially purifying your environment to support your biology. So if you want the best skin of your life, it's probably not a bad idea to start to learn about some of these different things that I mentioned in this video. If you're tuning in to want to learn, okay, what does dermal rolling do? Sure, it can help promote collagen, help reduce pigmentation, fine lines, wrinkles, acne scarring, all sorts of things. But to get the best outcome, you also want to be setting your skin up and your cellular health for success by making good decisions each and every day with what you put on the skin, your rolling, and also some biohacking options. So I hope that you found this session helpful for you to understand what is dermal rolling? What does it do? How do you incorporate it? What's my experience with it? And I would love to hear from you. I warmly invite you to send me a direct email at info at rachelvarga.ca. Let me know what you found interesting about this session and hang out with me on the Rachel Varga podcast.